So, Craig, Ben went ahead and hit the live button. We've got some folks watching already. We're uh, we're not going to officially start until 10 o'clock on the dot. But uh, what's going on out there? How's the weather out there by you? You know, we're uh, almost a carbon copy of Vegas. Uh, we're in the 50s and yeah. just kind of enjoying a mild winter. So we're, we're thrilled to not have any snow on the ground. We like having snow on the mountains where it belongs. There you go. There you go. It sounds good. We, uh, we've gotten kind of cool down here, but we've had some exceptionally warm weather. Uh, and now that we're in almost in February and we're ready for it to warm up and it's getting cold. <laughs> and it was getting cold. It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, at Christmas time, that would have been fine. Or when I'm, when I'm hunting, that's fine. But you know, we're past all that. It's time. It's a new year. It's a, it's a new day. We want things to warm up, and uh, we're all thinking about summertime now. So well, like uh, yeah, I'd, we've uh, gone on a Harley ride uh, out to see a car show in Mesquite, Nevada, and uh, you know, you go drive up over some of these mountain passes, and uh, it gets a little chilly. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Uh, I know you've got Salt Lake coming up, which is what we're going to be talking about here at, at 10 o'clock. Uh, anything else going on in your world right now? What's, what's, uh, what are you busy doing? You know, we've got, uh, we, we've got quite a bit going on with the National Association of Realtors. Uh, basically I'm the vice chair of that, uh, uh, real property valuation committee. And mm -hmm. we're trying to set up a, uh, uh, some, some, uh, policy, issues to deal with some of the things coming down the line. We just recently completed a uh, policy statement to update NAR's uh, policy for these de minimis uh, changes that keep filtering down through. And uh, yeah, so we're, we've been spending a fair amount of time working on that. Uh, do a little consulting for our state regulatory board. Uh, mm. And uh, so I get to visit with investigators pretty regularly as they have issues on, on, complaints that are filed. Right. And then, uh, I'm, I'm on the, uh, government affairs with the Utah association of realtors. And what, what they do is they track every, the legislators legislation started Monday. So, and they go for about two, about two months and uh, they track every single bill and every bill that uh, has anything to do with real estate, they give a yay or a nay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's interesting because I think appraisers would be interesting to see what's starting to happen with some of your state legislators is that uh, they're looking really hard at a sales tax on services. So right. it's not out of the question that uh, we could be collecting sales tax on appraisal services. Unbelievable. Right. Unbelievable. But that's the world we live in and it would not surprise me a bit. And we're taxed to death. I do ad valorem tax appeals and, and that's one thing. Everyone wins except for the tax collector. And I'm actually okay with that. <laughs> so I, I enjoy doing that kind of work for commercial property owners. If there's a, if there's a valid argument. Hey, Craig, it's 10 o'clock. It's time to get started. Hi, everybody. It's Brian Reynolds. This is the Appraisal Report Webinar Special Edition brought to you by our friends at Appraiser eLearning. We'd like to welcome all our viewers on. I'm tickled to death that we've got this special edition coming. We occasionally offer those. Of course, our, our monthly webinar is the fourth Thursday of every month at 10 o'clock Central Standard Time. It's free, so it's a good cost, uh, great savings for you, great information. Put it on your calendar the fourth Thursday of every month, 10 o'clock Central Standard Time. And go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe now so you don't forget. And then that keeps you in the know, just like today is a special webinar. And we offer those periodically when there's some uh, hot breaking news or something of interest that we think that uh, you'd like to see. As always, our webinars are recorded. So if you can't see this in its entirety, you can always look us up on the YouTube channel and come back and watch it in its entirety at your leisure. Finally, we are going to allow you to ask real time questions. So if you have a question, just type it in. We'll get to as many of those as we possibly can. And I'm super excited to have my guest here today, Mr. Craig Morley. He's a certified general appraiser. He is the vice president of the National Association of Appraisers. And Craig, welcome to the show. And if you don't mind, 
Tell everybody a little bit about you. What do you do? Brian, it's a pleasure to be with you today. And, uh, you know, I, I've been an appraiser since 1984. In fact, uh, I remember in the good old days, it was before licensing. Yeah. And trying to find a track on how to become an appraiser was no small task because most people came in through banking or through assessor's offices, but uh, there was not a clear track to get in. And if you couldn't find somebody to hire you, you couldn't, you couldn't get in. It was a dead end, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah it was, in fact, uh, it, it was a real challenge to, to get that going. And uh, I finally had a buddy up in Provo, Utah, who was an MAI. And he says, listen, just go hang a shingle out and start telling people you're an appraiser. <laughs> and uh, it, it actually worked okay. Right. So, uh, but uh, right now uh, we have a, uh, an, a, a regional appraisal firm. We do uh, residential and commercial appraisals in uh, Nevada, Utah, and Arizona. We've got nine appraisers and uh, I kind of I, I, day to day, I do appraisals just about every single day. And so we, we get a pretty diverse mix of stuff that we do. I st still enjoy doing residential appraisals, but uh, it's not uncommon for me to, you know, we're working on some condemnation stuff for the Department of Transportation. We're working on water line easements, uh, testifying in court on uh, some property damage on commercial office buildings. And so we get a, we get a pretty broad mix. And I think a lot of times as appraisers, we don't realize how varied the appraisal industry can be. We get so focused on the little mm -hmm. niche we're in that we forget that there's a lot of different valuation services we can provide. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I I, uh, I was speaking on that very issue yesterday. I was uh, teaching a class here in Nashville and I was talking about, you know, the residential appraiser has lost millions and millions of dollars because we've had blinders on and we think everything has to be done in one particular manner via 1004 most of the time. And we don't see all the opportunities that are available out there. There are so, way, so many ways to make money in the real estate industry and the valuation industry for that matter. So, Hey, I, I'm super excited. You're here today. We've already got a question coming in, uh, but we'll, we'll get to that in just a minute, Tina, I promise. Um, Craig, tell everybody also, I mean, you're not only a boots on the ground appraiser and a, a variety of valuation services, as you mentioned, nine appraisers. That's fantastic. I mean, you're involved at the state level, the local level, the federal level. You're you're all over the place. I don't know how you do it. Yeah, I, I, my, my wife gets a little annoyed with me because I get too many <laughs> sticks in the fire. But uh, right now, I, as you had mentioned, I'm the vice chair or vice president of the National Association of Appraisers, which is a boots on the ground appraisal uh, association and uh that that has some unique characteristics i'm sure we'll talk about a little bit later sure but sure. uh also the vice chair of the uh, national association of real uh, realtors real property valuation committee which i think many appraisers don't realize the national association of realtors has a 1.3 million membership it's the largest trade organization in the world and as an appraisal subcommittee there that we kind of work in that uh, venue we have significant resource to help shape national policy as it, it, as it applies to uh, appraisers. And so it's really been a lot of fun being involved in, in this additional association that allows us to help move the needle towards uh, to dealing with the appraisal related issues. I was on the uh, state appraisal licensing and certification board for eight years I've had a little bit of experience in dealing with the regulatory issues and then uh, served on a governmental affairs with the Utah Association of Realtors where we monitor all of the legislation that comes out. And then if there's a valuation issue, then I'm generally involved in trying to decide if we want to. Okay, I've got uh, I've got him frozen at the moment. So Benjamin, I don't know if you can uh, take a look at that, or if he's good on your end. Craig, are you there?
We're going to hold one second. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties, and Benjamin's going to be on top of that in just a second. I'm going to I'm going to look at a question here. Uh, we had a question from Tim. It says, guys, would you provide some details on the other stuff appraisers can do? Um, so there's a, a there's a whole host that that you can do. You know, when I got in this business, I did a 1004 on everything I did. And I really woke up one day and realized, you know, if I've got a client, a homeowner thinking about selling their house. Do I have to force a 1004 form down their throat? Do I have to sell them a photograph of their own house? I mean, after all, they know what their house looks like. Um, do I have to sell them a copy of their deed? And for crying out loud, they have the original. Is there a way that I can provide a valuation service to this homeowner who's thinking about selling their house uh, in a different format? And I found out there was, there, there was the restricted appraisal report. There was an oral appraisal report, which a lot of appraisers have never done. And, and we as human beings resist change. Uh, Craig, are you back with us? I think we're back. I don't know <laughs> okay. what's happening, but uh, it always happens when you're live, right? Yeah, it does. It does. I, I was just, uh, we had a question from <laughs> Tim asking about some details on other, other stuff. And so I was giving a couple of examples while we while we kind of held the fort down waiting back for all you. right. Um, let's go ahead and knock this question out from Tina because it's it's a separate issue and we definitely want to get to the subject matter at hand on the Axe conference. But Tina asked a question that said, and Tim, I know that was you, but we also have a question from Tina. So <laughs> Tim, I did not call you Tina. <laughs> but Tina <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. It was Tim. I thought it was Tina. Sales tax on services. Is this a federal issue or one left up to the states? Craig, do you have any input on that? It's a it's a state issue. But what one of the things that I think that as appraisers we we don't realize is that uh, the National Association of Appraisers has our board of governors with state associations. And uh, one of the best ways to kind of combat these kinds of intrusive uh taxes and other things is, is to get join your state association, get mm -hmm. involved. Uh, NAA is a great resource because we combine these state associations into a, a board of governors. But uh, the, the reality is, is if we sit back passively and don't say anything or do anything, these things uh, can get away from us. And uh, we find ourselves with burdensome regulation that uh, if we don't say anything, then we can't really complain. Right, right. Well, let's go ahead and and start talking about this a little bit because we're gonna we're gonna be all over the place here in just a second. And that's okay. But let's let's start talking about acts, and then that'll lead into uh, who puts that on, which is NAA and and appraiser e learnings helping out. But let's talk about acts, okay? I want to know what, when, why, that kind of thing. Let's just start out with what is it? What is acts? So it, it, it's an acronym for the Appraisal Conference and Trade Show that uh, this is our second year. We uh, decided to start doing a dual conference uh, through the National Association of Appraisers. We've had our annual conference uh, in Las Vegas in the fall. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thought, gee, wouldn't it be nice if we had a conference that we could do that uh, would swap basically from east to west coast so last year was our very first conference in nashville which yeah, was yeah. awesome yeah it was fantastic and, and then uh we decided to go ahead and go west coast this year in salt lake city and uh it it's going to be april 10th through the 12th in uh, salt lake and uh we're going to be at the uh university marriott uh, hotel uh, up by the university of utah and there's all kinds of really fun things we're going to be able to do as side venues. Uh, I'm really excited that Hal Humphreys is going to be teaching a pre-conference uh, uh, class on review, Absolutely. which uh, I think is going to be awesome. So there's there's some really good uh, 
some really exciting things associated with this. Yeah, Hal, Hal is a fantastic storyteller. And uh, if our viewers out there don't know who Hal is, uh, you will meet him at the conference. If you have a chance to take that class, we encourage you to do so. He's a lot of fun, knowledgeable guy. He's a private eye, which is kind of cool, too. He doesn't carry a gun, I don't think. But uh, but he, he does have all the women chasing him. It's the big beard, I believe. I'm not sure. Uh, so if you've not been to a conference before, okay. And, and I think that's part of, uh, appraisers problems. We we're by definition, Craig, we're independent. Okay. Appraisers are independent and it's really hard for appraisers to come together. I, I ask in a lot of the classes, you know, how often I had 17 people in my, my live class yesterday. Okay. So how often are you around this many other appraisers? And, you know, commonly the answer is once a year when I take my CE class, that's it. Right. So, so we really need to come together. So if, if, if a viewer that's watching right now, or if somebody chimes in later and watches the recorded version, if they've never been to a conference, what can they expect when they arrive, they come to the welcome reception, and then the first day of the conference, what can they expect? You know, the, the, the thing that I really enjoy about these conferences is you have national players that come and provide you with perspectives that you just can't get any place else. Right. So when I get a guy like John Brennan, who will be there mm -hmm. and has the opportunity to explain what's going on at a licensing and, and standards level, we've just had our third exposure draft with USPAP come out and, and we've just had some major changes in the licensing requirements. It's really nice to have the people at the top of the industry to be able to explain not only what's happening, but why. And, and oftentimes the why is as important as what. And so I, I really enjoy that. We'll have a We've also got slated to have a GSE roundtable, and there's a lot of appraisers really worried about what's going on with the GSEs. And yeah, uh, yeah, nice government government sponsored enterprises. Uh, so, so we've got people that are viewing this that are not not just appraisers. We've got regulatories. We we have real estate agents, and so you're the roundtable. You're you're talking about who's going to be there. What what is a GSE? So the government sponsored uh, entities are basically Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Uh, and and uh, we have representatives from both Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that are going to be there. And, uh, you know, right now we, we are concerned about, uh, you know, one of the hot button issues is the so-called bifurcated appraisals. Right. Know? Absolutely. And, and is that something that's going to happen? What's the timeline? Fannie Mae is right in the middle of what they call their, a, their uh, appraisal modernization. Right. They want to modernize the way data is moved and how appraisers use it and all of that. And so, yeah, it, it, there's some there's some really significant issues out there. Yeah, it was fantastic. You know, we we had a, a similar roundtable in Vegas and, uh, <laughs> and the first time ever, you know, my, my luggage was not lost. You know, and I'm like, I, I probably ought to wear a, a suit coat or something on the plane. No, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be comfortable. You know, I'm gonna wear shorts and and a polo and just become. Well, my luggage didn't get lost, Craig. But for the first time in the history of Southwest, they said this has never happened. The luggage was in Nashville, going along the conveyor belt, and a pipe busted and sprayed down on all our luggage. And they said, "We don't know if that's fuel or what that is." So they had to bring in the environmentalists in their suits and everything. So I, I had to come visit the, all the all the suits and ties and all the appraisers in there, and and AMC's and a banker and Julie Jones with Fannie Mae. I'm the guy walking in in shorts and running shoes. I'm like, oh God, this is horrible. So yeah, that happened to me. But I was there. I was there. So so let's let's get this, let's get this right for the viewers that are watching right now. Are you telling me that Fannie Mae represent, representatives from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are going to be at this conference? So so I'll ask my viewers, when is the last time you as a practicing appraiser got to walk right up to Fannie Mae and have a conversation with them? Have you ever had that opportunity? Craig, are you telling me that our viewers, if they come out to Salt Lake and they attend the Axe Conference, they can actually have a conversation with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac? Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's and, and what 
as you say, when's the last time you've had that opportunity? You can't have those opportunities unless you come to these kinds of conferences. And, and that's one of the real benefits to me is, is the ability to network and to ask questions and to talk to people who know more than we do. Yeah, it's amazing. You mentioned John Brennan. There's going to be a whole host of folks. And so right now, while people are watching this, if they want uh, more information, and, and we're just open the can here, so we've got a lot to talk about, but you can go to the National Association of Appraisers website. They have a, a, a tab there for acts, and you can get a whole schedule of the speakers that are going to be there, the cost, the dates, and that type of thing. We've got some questions coming in, Craig. So let's get to a couple of those right now. And then, and then we're going to talk about the NAA just a little bit more uh, before we dive back into the specifics of the acts. But here's a couple of uh, couple of questions that are coming in. Uh, CJ, CJ asks a question that says, "Will the classes be before the actual conference? How do the classes work?" So we, we have pre-conference classes that you can sign up for. So the one I'd mentioned with Hal Humphreys is a pre-conference class that you can come. And by the way, if you take that class and are a member of NAA, uh, you can get a review designation if you can pass the exam. Mm. Uh, the conference itself though, uh, will basically be uh, continuing education that will should be nationwide. Every state in the country is, is being applied for education. And uh, I believe each uh, course uh, or each day is uh, approved for seven hours of continuing education. And it will be a series. Each day will have be broken into segments where we will have these various uh, presenters come and provide us with information that provides useful information for, for the boots on the ground appraiser to be able to have information that can improve their practice. Yeah. So what's, what's interesting and, and CJ, I'll expand a little bit on that as well, because I remember back to the first time I went to a conference, I didn't know what to expect. And so the really cool thing about it is this, have you ever been to a class and you get a real monotone voice who's talking like this and hiding behind a, a podium and for seven hours you have to listen to that and you just want to pull your hair out. Right? So the nice thing about it, if, if we, happen to have a speaker like that, which we don't, but if we were to have one like that, you're only stuck with them for about 30, 45 minutes because we have a whole array of speakers. So you're, you're in a classroom or in a, in a conference room or in a, in a setting, a conference hall, and you have a speaker up there talking on a particular issue, let's say USPAP for instance. And then when that speaker is done, we clap and the next speaker comes up and is speaking on a whole different circumstance or a whole different issue. So you may have a day in which you have what, Craig, five, six different speakers or people giving lectures. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. In fact, Brian, one of the things I'm most excited about is we have a technology panel that is going to be able to go in and outline some of these different uh, technology services that are available. You know, nothing is more frustrating for me is to see I've got all of these different appraisal tools that are out there. Which one is right for me? What does it do? Why should I do it? Why shouldn't I do it? And to have a group of these people to talk about what some of the uh, tools are and how they apply or don't apply, I think to me is just awesome. And, and to be able to interact with these people after is just, uh, boy, what a way to build your business and to make you a better appraiser and to be able to interact with the people that uh, are actually providing these services. You know, I, I have to say, Craig, uh, at every, every single conference I've ever been to, and that's whether I'm, I'm there as an attendee or if I'm there as an invited speaker, I walk away with learning multiple things. And that's, that's, that's what's so exciting for me is not only am I networking and meeting appraisers from all around the country. When we had the one here in Nashville uh, last year, I had two people from Hawaii in my class. And it was interesting to hear different perspectives from folks from Hawaii, right? Johnny G, whoo, that's hard to say. Johnny G is on the, on the dial next. Craig's got that radio voice, so I can't help myself. Every once in a while, I just feel like we're going to start spinning some vinyl up here. But, but Johnny G, Johnny G, he asked a question, will attendance at the conference include any certified CE hours? 
Yes, in fact, uh, all of the conference uh, classes will be certified CE for every state in the country. So it doesn't matter if you're on the East Coast or West Coast. If you come, you can get CE at the conference. Yeah, that's great. So so you you get 14 hours of continuing ed. As you said, if you want to take some pre-conference classes with Hal or, or whatnot, you get additional hours for that. So let's talk about what you get. All right. What does your registration get you if you are wanting to come to the conference? You sign up, okay, and you get to get there the day early. And that that evening, there'll be a welcome reception. Okay. So you, that's included. Then you have a full day of lectures and lunch is included. And then the very last day, you have another day of lectures by a variety of speakers, very engaging, uh, fantastic speakers. And lunch is provided again. I mean, it's a pretty good deal. Let me ask you this. NEA is going to, you know, they're the ones putting this on and, and appraisal e-learning, uh, very excited to be a partner in that, helping out. But is there some meetings or is there an NAA board meeting? Is there anything going on during this process, Craig? And if so, uh, are these attendees, could they set in on any of those meetings, committee meetings, board meetings, et cetera? Yeah, absolutely. Brian, we have our board of directors meeting the day before the actual conference starts. And it's open to the public. Anybody can come in and, uh, and, and see what's going on with that. We will have a board of governors, which is a representative from each state association that's a member of uh, NAA. And, uh, and then we have a membership meeting in the afternoon that uh, anyone can come and participate with. And so it's a great opportunity to rub shoulders with uh, the the board of directors to see what NAA is actually doing, which, you know, I think a lot of times as individual appraisers, we don't realize what goes on behind the scenes mm -hmm. in terms of providing input to national players and, and trying to influence the policies to benefit the appraisal industry. And uh, there's a lot of that that goes on. So you, you get a better insight of what uh, is happening with uh, with the association and the members of, uh, that are affiliated with it. Yeah, so let's let's talk about NAA for a minute, okay? A lot of our viewers um, are familiar with NAA. It is a growing organization. It is dedicated to boots on the ground appraisers, and that's why I love it. Um, but but tell somebody out there that's watching that might not, Craig, be familiar with NAA. What is NAA? Who is NAA? What do they do? And, and just as importantly, why should somebody out there join NAA, especially if they're a member of another organization or a member of their state organization? Uh, that, that's great. Uh, you know, it's surprising to me, Brian, how many people who join NAA are also a member of a different appraisal organization, mm -hmm. hold designations through some of these other organizations, and yet they join NAA. And the question is, well, why would you do that? Right. Well, my my personal experience is I'm affiliated with a number of different associations, but uh, NAA is a affordable way to get representation that uh, is really hard to get anyplace else. And one of the things that uh, you know we do is we provide public comments to uh, for we just recently had a uh, committee meeting where we drafted comments to send back to the appraisal standards board on the third exposure draft of USPAP and found a few areas there that we felt like could use a little bit of adjustment. And we provided those so that uh, we can try to shape the standards by which we live in a way that is in, in everyone's best interest. We provide comments back uh, on the, uh, you know, that there's a really hot button issue with the uh, raising of the de minimis from 250 to 400,000. Mm -hmm. NAA is actively involved in providing feedback and comments as one of a number of organizations that are out there trying to make sure that we don't compromise the public trust and, and, and the lending community by having too high of lending thresholds without having a third party appraiser involved in the deal. 
And so we, we take a pretty active role in doing that, in addition to having this Board of Governors where the individual states are able to uh, collaborate with each other and try to deal with issues that uh, arise on a state level as well. Fantastic. Hey, believe it or not, we're already at the halfway mark. I, can't, I feel like we just got started here. Hey, everybody, thanks for watching. This is Brian Reynolds. We're at the halfway mark. This is the Appraisal Report webinar brought to you by Appraiser eLearning. We have our regular series of webinars the fourth Thursday of every month at 10 o'clock Central Standard Time. The cost is, well, there's no cost. It's free. So we invite you to join us each and every month where we have a new guest in the hot seat, if you will. If you would like to be a guest or you know of someone that would make a good guest, give us a call, shoot us an email. We'll reach out to that person and invite them on the program. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That keeps you in the know. It also keeps you informed in the event we have, well, kind of like we have today, a special webinar, right? Sometimes we'll have breaking news. Sometimes we'll have a special edition webinar like we are today. And if you join that YouTube channel, you will know when those are uh, coming up. Uh, in addition, we record all of our sessions and they are available on the YouTube channel. So if you can't see this in its entirety and you want to get back on a little later, feel free to check out the recorded uh, episodes on our YouTube channel. And last but not least, we allow you, the viewer, to interact with us. And this is not rehearsed. Uh, we don't say we don't allow questions. We encourage questions. So you can type those in. We'll get to as many of those as we possibly can during the broadcast. And again, we look forward to seeing you on some upcoming uh, events as well. But we're not done yet. We still have a lot to talk about. So again, if you have a question, go ahead and type that in. You know, Craig, when we talk about the NAA and, and some of their accomplishments or why people ought to be involved, you know, I always, I always say this. I say, you know, if you're in a particular state and maybe you're uh, a member of your state organization um, and we look at another state, a neighboring state, or maybe another state completely across the country, right? Uh, I'm in Kentucky. I'm in Tennessee a lot. Uh, Utah passes a law that's great for Utah appraisers. Yay, Utah! But how does that help the appraisers in Tennessee? I mean, it, it really doesn't. How does it help the appraisers in Florida or Kentucky or Indiana? It, it really doesn't. So as a national organization, the National Association of Appraisers, we really kind of have all the appraisers across the country's best interest in mind. I believe when, when HUD was announcing the new handbook, and you correct me uh, if I'm wrong, I believe NAA got really involved in that. And before the 4001 came out, uh, if I remember right, NAA had suggested 27 corrections or revisions. And my understanding is HUD adopted 21 of those 27 recommendations by the NAA. That's huge. That's significant. You know, and the reality is, is, as an individual reaching out to HUD and providing those comments, it just does not have the same impact mm -hmm. as a national organization. Even as a state association, we reach out and say, ah, gee, we think that you need to take a second look at this. It's just not the same. And, and one of the benefits too that I see is a state passes, adopts some administrative rules or some legislation that uh, may uh, serve as a great template for another state who wants to try to adopt those things. And having that collaboration from state to state provides a great option for uh, these associations to collaborate and try to try to use things that have worked in other places. Hey, let's let's talk real quickly. If somebody somebody is a member of their state organization let's say they're they're actively involved in their state organization or let's say there's a state out there that doesn't have an organization and you've got a lot of appraisers kind of kicking the idea around maybe we should come together maybe we should create a state organization if these organizations want to get involved within NAA how do they go about doing that i mean tell everybody out there watching what is a board of governors what is that what do they do so what the Board of Governors is, is it is, a, it, it is the collaboration of the individual state organizations that are affiliated with NAA. 
And it's really, I we have offered state organizations that would like to join. The first year, there's no cost. And after that, the cost is really very minimal. Wait a minute, wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. You just said the first year for a state organization is free? Is that what free. you said? Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah, and so <laughs> it, it, it provides that association with a uh, an option to be able to not only deal with the state issues, but to collaborate with other states around the country to come to the AXE conference and sit in on that board of governors meeting. And by the way, anybody who's involved with the state association, come to the conference. You don't even have to join the, uh, you know, we'd like to see you register and do all of the <laughs> sure. stuff, but if sure. you want to just come and sit in, you're welcome to do that and, uh, and, and see what it's about. But, but we think that that provides, it's the only organization in the country that has this kind of dual class membership where your your members that are a member of your state uh kind of hey I, I i don't know that the language i'm using is entirely correct but they've got kind of an affiliate association with the naa by your state joining and it provides uh some resources that uh, you just can't get anyplace else yeah so so let's let's talk just a second I'm, I'm just a guy, you know, I'm, I'm just a, a typical appraiser out there doing my daily thing. And, and, you know, we're all busy people. Everybody's busy these days. And, and, and I don't have time to get involved and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I, I talk about, uh, uh, getting involved. Right. And, and gosh, I don't have time either, but guys, you know, it's the old saying, don't complain unless you're going to get involved. Right. So, so, how does how does NAA help that person that really doesn't have the time to, to be extremely active, but is still concerned about their profession? For instance, you know, you mentioned the exposure draft right now. We're on the third exposure draft. Guys, these are the changes that impact your livelihood, right? These changes are going to be your minimum standard, the minimum requirements of uniform standards. What are they? What's on the horizon? Do you know? Do you care? I mean, you should care because it might impact how busy or or how much work you have to do. So at the at the final decision, uh, there's a there's a public meeting and then they vote, and maybe somebody can't be at that meeting. I guess my question, Craig, is this: If someone joins the NAA, will their voice or will they be represented at some of these uh, appraisal foundation meetings, aero conferences, do they have a seat or a voice at the table? That's my question. You know, and that's a great question. And, and the answer is yes. NAA has someone that goes to every single one of these meetings. We've, you know, as a small organization, it's been remarkable to see the influence that we've had in shaping some of the policies, as you had mentioned with FHA, many of the changes that we proposed with uh, the uh, appraisal qualifications board were implemented as, mm -hmm. as a track to allow a licensed appraiser to uh, get waive one of the uh, uh, college education requirements uh, for for licensing by experience it took four times before we <laughs> got that thing through but it it, it just made it an, another option that uh, represented things that, that uh, the individual appraiser just wouldn't be able to do. And I think one of the things that we look at is nationally, probably about 70% of the appraisers are not directly affiliated with an appraisal organization. Mm -hmm. and, and when you look at NAA, you're, you're, it, it's about a hundred bucks to join and, and with an annual renewable of a hundred dollars, you cannot find an association anywhere where the fees are that low. And, and the reason they are is because this isn't a money-making venture. Nobody's getting paid to do this stuff. Yeah. We're out here trying to just do the best we can for the industry. And, and uh, it, it, as far as a bang for your buck, it's just, you can't find anything better. And Brian, I think one of the things that the people who are listening need to be aware of is that with this conference, the, the the fee, the cost to join the conference is pretty reasonable at uh, $425. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. if you join, if you come to this conference 
and join as a NAA member, the NAA membership cost is three twenty-five. dollars So for four twenty-five, dollars you can join the National Association of, uh, of Appraisers and get the membership discount at three twenty-five, dollars and, and you're a member for a year. How, how do you no. Now, now, wait a minute. Let me make sure I understand this because you're giving away a lot of free stuff here today, right? Yeah. So I, want, I want to make sure I understand this. I want our viewers to comprehend this. So the, the fee to come to the conference, if you're not a member of NAA and you don't have to be a member of NAA, this is open to anyone, right? I understand that correct. Non-members can attend the conference, right? Right. That fee and that, that fee is before January 31st. So we, you got a few days, you got to, you got to hurry up out quick. It's $425. That's what it's going to cost you. However, for an NAA member, the cost before January 31st is $325. So if I pay the non member which I'm a member, right? But if someone pays the non-member price of $425, instead of just registering for $425 as a non-member, join... And then you get it for three twenty five. You're basically getting the membership at no cost, and you're a member for a year. Is that right? That's right. And, and, and we we think that uh, there's just no better value out there. I, I can pretty pretty well guarantee any other association is not have that deal available to them. Guys, check that out. Check out the website if you uh, want more information. You can also. Uh, email info at naappraisers.org. Listen, one thing that you mentioned a moment ago, I, I, I bet there's a lot of appraisers out there that don't know uh, about the qualification criteria change, Craig. Uh, I, I had a gentleman in my office yesterday and um, he's certified residential and he says he does FHA and he had a colleague in class as well. They were from the Knoxville area. And uh, Tony, hi, Tony. He's in class again today with one of my other instructors. Uh, he said his, his other guy is licensed. He's a license level. And I said, oh, so uh, are you not, you're, you're not able to do FHA because FHA changed that. You have to be you know, certified residential. He said, yeah. He said, I used to do, I used to do FHA years ago before they changed it. And I said, well, you are aware that the appraisal foundation changed the real property appraisal qualification criteria, right? And he said, what are you talking about? <laughs> and, I, and I said, well, I don't know if you have any college, but there's six options available now. You don't have to necessarily have a bachelor's degree. There's six options. And, and option number six is if you're a licensed appraiser for a period of five years, you haven't had any disciplinary issues, you can seek an upgrade from license level to certified residential. His eyes got huge. I mean, he had no clue he sees this as an immediate opportunity. I mean, he's got to go take the state exam again, right? And there's a process, but this was a door that has been closed to him ever since FHA changed that. I got another guy in Clarksville, Tennessee. He's in his fifties. He's not only a father, but he's a grandfather, right? He used to do FHA work as a licensed appraiser for years. And that was taken away from him. Is he going to go back? You know, he's trying to work, <laughs> he's trying to raise a family, be a grandpa. Is he going to go back to school and get his uh, bachelor's? Probably not. But now there's an opportunity for him to do that again. And whether they know it or not, there's a lot of thank yous that should be given to the NAA. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. Because that was one of the tracks that we were really uh, wanted to see as, as an option. Because we believed that uh, practical experience had to count for something. And the school of hard knocks is uh, sometimes uh, the most uh, effective teacher. And we felt like somebody who had had practical experience ought to get some credit for that. And that was one of the things we were advocating for and ultimately got. But it, it took a few times to, before the appraisal qualification board uh, bought off on it. But we were thrilled to see that ultimately happen. Yeah, absolutely. So, so again, to remind the viewers, you can, uh, you can pay the non-member registration fee and come out and have a great time. Meet a lot of people have lunch on us, have, have a welcome reception on us, not be stuck with one speaker. You have a variety of speakers and you get 14 hours of CE. If you want to come a day early, uh, you can get another seven hours in one of the pre, uh, conference classes and you're going to meet a lot of people and hear a lot of great instructors. I'm just going to go down a list of some of the speakers real quick. 
Uh, you have uh, Mitch from Data Master going to be speaking. You mentioned Hal Humphreys with uh, Praise Your Learning. He'll be there. Jim Baumgartner, man, he does a great job. If uh, if you haven't heard uh, Jim, he does a really, really good job. Uh, Craig Morley, I see your name on that list. You're going to be speaking. Uh, the chief appraiser with House Canary, Steve O'Brien, is going to be there. Jay Priestler, uh, again, with uh, Data Master, is going to be speaking. Jeff Bradford, founder of Bradford Technologies, is going to be there. Uh, you have David Brauner. If anybody gets the Working Real Estate Magazine and you look through that, here's a chance for you to come out and meet the editor and publisher of Working RE. Have you ever had that opportunity in your life? Uh, Scott with Fannie Mae's, excuse me, Freddie Mac, John Brennan with the Appraisal Foundation is going to be there. Law with Fannie Mae is going to be there. My friend Craig Capella, an attorney that was on our webinar just last week, he's an attorney with the Franklin Law Group out of Illinois. Uh, he used to work with the other side, <laughs> and they're not bad people, but he used to be counsel for the board. Now he's in private practice helping appraisers that get in trouble, try to help them get out of trouble. So you're going to hear from Craig Capella. Josh Wallet's going to be there. Uh, Peter Christensen's going to be there. Danny Wiley's going to be there. Scott Cullen. Scott Cullen has uh, some really cool software. Scott with the Appraisal Institute. Ashley's going to be there. The president, John Dingham, is going to be there. I mean, there's going to be a really a whole host of excellent speakers. And I know you've heard most of those folks. Um, the number one reason, hey, Craig, if you had to give a number one, the viewers that are watching right now, what's the number one reason they should come out and see us all at Axe? Well, I think it's because it's fun. You know, you <laughs> come out, you, you collaborate, uh, you, you network with people. I think one of the problems, and Brian, you'll, you'll appreciate this, you know, in USPAP, it talks about uh, doing what your peers would do in terms of trying to establish, you know, what is an appropriate course of action in doing, in performing an appraisal. And my conclusion has been is that most appraisers have no idea what their peers would do because they never <laughs> talk to them. Yeah. And, and so this yeah. is a way that you can actually talk to your peers and find out how they do stuff that will probably benefit you in ways you can't even appreciate until you've been there. Boy, that's a that's a great idea. You know, uh, somebody's in that hot seat. And, uh, well, it's what my peers are doing. Well, how in the heck do you know it's what your peers are doing? You never talk to your peers. You're in your own little world, in your own cave, in your cubicle. You, you don't get out there and see those. So now I'm looking at the schedule of events. And guys, you can follow along with me if you go to, you don't have to put www in anymore. But if you want to, you can. It's naappraisers.org. If you go to that, click Axe. There is a schedule, a registration, speakers, exhibitors, approvals. And uh, Benjamin did give me a note a moment ago uh, when Johnny G, Johnny G, I love that, Johnny G. I, I, I want to meet Johnny G, whoever Johnny G is. Come out, Johnny. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, Ben, ben uh, kind of hit me and said uh, to make an announcement real quick. If you have any question about your state's acceptance of conference for CE purposes, you can contact Ben Maxwell. Uh, he works the magic here at Appraiser E-Learning. Ben Maxwell, his email is ben at storyboardemp.com. Ben at storyboardemp.com. So back to the schedule. If we look at the schedule, here's our pre-conference on Tuesday, April the 9th. That's how Humphrey's review course that we talked about earlier. We also have the NAA board of directors meeting from 4 o'clock to 6.30. And Craig, you said anybody can kind of set in on that, right? Yeah, yeah, come. We'd love to see you. So, guys, if if uh, if you have something to say, if you'd like to get involved, if you would like for the NAA uh, Board of Directors can, to consider a particular point or issue, come sit in on their board meeting. You're, it's welcome. Everyone's welcome. So that's at four o'clock to six thirty on Tuesday, April the 9th. On Wednesday, April the tenth, that's where you have your state appraisal organization leadership forum. And at three o'clock, you have the NAA membership meeting. Again, Craig, uh, is it my understanding that anyone can attend those events? Is that right? Absolutely. And in fact, we would love to see you there. It, and then it really becomes the, the venue where if you've got issues that you would like to see addressed, uh, you have something going on you want to talk to somebody about, come out, let, let's chat. 
Yeah, absolutely. We uh, we welcome everyone to those meetings, whether you're a member or not. And guys, if you want to get involved, show up and say, hey, pick me, put me on a committee for crying out loud. I have something to say. I have something to contribute. We really, really need to come together as appraisers. We can impact change if we come together, right? A hundred voices, a thousand voices, 5,000 voices are a lot louder than one voice. So we encourage you to not only attend, we encourage you to get involved. Uh, that evening, Wednesday, April the 10th, the registration opens up and that opens up at three o'clock and goes all the way down to 630. You'll get a little welcome bag. You'll uh, get to meet some folks. Uh, Teresa Walker does a really great job. Be sure you go up and, and say hello to her. She's a dear friend of mine. The welcome reception starts at 5 o'clock, and that's from 5 to 6.30. Uh, you'll get to kind of meet folks throughout the country. It's your uh, meet and greet, if you will, the welcome reception, a networking reception. And guys, you know, they say a lot of business is done on the golf course. Craig, I'd say there's probably a lot of business done at an appraisal conference, wouldn't you? Absolutely. And, and a lot of new business that you're able to kind of generate. I mean, I don't know how many of you guys get a call said, hey, who do you know that can help me with something over here? And uh, be able to have that association is a great way to refer work back and forth. Yeah, no question about it. Thursday, the conference starts off at 8 a.m. And I'm not going to read all this to you. If you go on www.naappraisers.org, hit the schedule, you can get a list of what the happenings are starting Thursday morning at 8 a.m. At 8 a.m. Thursday, April the 11th. Again, lunch is on uh, on us, and uh, then we round out uh, the last day on Friday. Guys, we, we really encourage you to attend. Uh, if you've never been to a conference, do yourself a favor. I mean, you, you get to come out and see the beautiful Salt Lake area. If you've never been out there, how exciting. Spend an extra couple of days. It's a write-off. But you're going to, I promise you, you're going to learn something at this event. You're going to have fun. And you're going to meet a lot of folks that are passionate about this crazy business we call appraising, right? Uh, Craig, I want to thank you so much for being here today. Where, where else are, I know you're going to be in Salt Lake in April. You got any other uh, travels coming up anytime soon? Yeah, we'll be in Washington, D.C. in uh, May. And, uh, We've got, uh, I, I start losing track of the different things <laughs> that have got to be. <laughs> what, what's in, uh, what's, what's going on in Washington in May? What are you out there for? That's the uh, semi-annual National Association of Realtors uh, meeting. It's, it's an opportunity where we go meet every single legislator in the U.S. and talk about real estate related kinds of things. And uh, we've got some really major things on the appraisal uh, horizon that uh, we're talking about uh, in our committee meetings there. So it, 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 it's a pretty, it's a pretty effective meeting. That's fantastic. And again, appraisers, if you're watching, uh, and not just appraisers, anybody in the industry get involved. I mean, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac's going to be there. I know, uh, Fannie, Fannie Mae's been talking about producing a new appraisal form, right? Right. New, I don't know if it'll be called 1004. I guess it will. I don't know. And, and we've had the one we've got now for, Gosh, we've had it a while, right? It's uh, yeah, 2005. 2005. And yeah. so. <laughs> I, re I still call that the new form, Craig. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when, when that came out, I taught a class up around the Cincinnati area. It was in Florence. And uh, old Henry Harrison was there, the old Forms and Worms guy. He, uh, he was one of our guest speakers. And we were talking about the new form. And uh, it's not so new anymore. We probably need a new uh, a new report uh, format. So uh, I, I was in a meeting with uh, some Fannie Mae representatives not too long ago, and uh, it was interesting to see their perspective. I think sometimes the things that we think our clients want as appraisers is different than what they actually want. And uh, in talking with Fannie Mae, you know, we kind of think they're looking at maybe simplifying and reducing and uh, in talking with them as part of this modernization, they're looking at probably multiple forms mm. with more granular data. You know, I think sometimes like, like I always uh, get a kick out of, 
your comment about the who cares what the bass around looks like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, when was the house remodeled and what did they do? And I think, you know, that we don't know where it's going to go, but some of the input that I'd provided to Fannie Mae in, in one of the venues that I was at with them was, you know, you've got houses that uh, the outside is maybe in good condition, the inside's not so much. Maybe we need to start breaking up components of the property and rating these quality and condition based on the various components within the the house. And they seem pretty receptive to that. So it'll be interesting to see where it ends up, but it, it's no decisions are made. And, right. and uh, having the opportunity to provide appraiser perspective to some of this is going to be uh, critical. You know, we've been saying for a long, long time, wouldn't it be very cool if appraisers could be involved in the process of how these forms are shaped? And and guys, here's your opportunity. Come out to the Axe Conference. You can go over and have a direct conversation with Fannie Mae, with Freddie Mac, and tell them, hey, I think this part on the form is silly. I think you ought to have this. I, I think it should be a two-page form again instead of a six-page form. Whatever your thoughts are. Don't just come up and complain, right? <laughs> maybe maybe offer a solution or a, or a new idea or something. Things are going to change. There's there's no question about that. I, I preach that all the time. Things are going to change. If you don't believe me, look in the mirror. Things are things are going to change whether you want them to or not. And uh, and you can resist change or you can consider adapting and be ready. Hey, we've got another comment here. Um, uh, Scott says we need a URLR uniform residential listing form completed by an appraiser for each MLS listing. I don't know. That, that's interesting. Maybe, uh, probably talking about trying to get the best data we can possibly can. Uh, is there any type of discount for the four nine class with Humphreys? Uh, Benjamin, I'll let you, uh, CJ is asking again. Um, that is a Benjamin question. Uh, I would say this, um, CJ email Ben. <laughs> that's, yeah. not, that's number, that's It'll number one. I, I don't have the authority to just give, give away the farm here, but, uh, CJ email Ben. And I will, I will tell our viewers this, keep, keep watching our broadcast between now and the conference. Hey, Craig, thanks for being here. But but let's uh, let's summarize everything one last time in case uh, in case somebody needs uh, a reminder. When is the conference? Tell us when it is. Well, you want to come in April. Uh, the the pre conference. Uh, oh, gee, my eyes are going bad on me. Uh, the tenth. Uh, you tell me, Brian. I <laughs> I got you, didn't I? Okay. Yeah, so the, 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 the pre conference I calendar, but I can't open it. I knew I would stump him up sooner or later. I've been trying for an hour here. I'm just teasing. So <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday, April the ninth. Right. Tuesday, April the ninth is the pre conference and also the NAA board of directors meeting. So we encourage you to come. On Tuesday, hey, the board meeting's not till four. So if you can't make the class, get there at four. But what we'd recommend you do is go go listen to Hal speak from eight to four. You'll have a good time. You'll learn a lot. And then at four o'clock, you have the board of directors meeting. That's Tuesday, April the 9th, 2019 at the Axe Conference. Wednesday uh, is the organization meetings. You don't have to attend, but you're welcome to do that. The actual conference itself starts and kicks off uh, with a welcome reception Wednesday night, April the 10th. If you can't make that, if you just want to get there just for the two days of conference, that's certainly uh, acceptable as well. And that is April the 11th and the 12th. Uh, one last time, as far as the cost associated with this, Craig, what's it going to cost these fine folks? Well, if you're an NAA member, which we hope you will be one, it's 325 If you're not, you can pay 425 and then join NAA for free. So uh, that uh, hard, hard deal to beat. And the, the thing that some of you may want to keep in mind as well is that the Utah State Association uh, is looking to put some events together. I know there's some that are, there's some ski resorts that uh, will be open in April still. Oh, nice, nice. That, uh, if you want to do a little side trip and go catch a little skiing and uh, do some sightseeing, you know, some of the best skiing in the world is located about 30 minutes up the canyon from Salt Lake. And uh, there's just a lot of really cool places to go see and visit. 
So bring your family if you want and make a make a trip out of it. It's absolutely stunning out there. If you've never been to Utah and, and the Salt Lake area, it's absolutely beautiful. Do yourself a favor. Come out, see the great state of Utah, meet the people. Come to the Axe Conference, have a good time, and, and learn a little something. Hey, Craig, my friend, thank you so very much for being here today. I, I, it's, been, it's been a blast. It's been informative. And uh, you and you and that voice. I mean, I love love that radio voice. Hey, Craig, if somebody wants to reach out to you and contact you directly, uh, how can any of our viewers uh, kind of get in touch with you? Yeah, let me let me give you an email address, and I try to make it easy. It's valuepro at gmail.com, but value is spelled with no e, so it's just v a l u p r o at gmail.com. Send me an email. I'd be, I'd love to visit with anybody who would like. Uh, it, it's just a lot of fun interacting and uh, sharing uh, ideas on how we can uh, become better appraisers. I'd, I'd love to visit with anyone. You know, the nice thing about Craig and and this network of folks, it's it's fantastic that if you're stumped, if you're if you're a boots on the ground appraiser out there, you you do your day to day thing, and one of the problems about being independent is you're normally always independent and you don't have somebody to bounce something off of, or maybe you do, but, but it's a small group. And this really opens you up to a much larger group that if you're dealing with a, a challenging assignment, or maybe you're, you're knee deep in a situation you've, you thought you were competent to do, or you need a helping hand, you have a whole family or a whole network of folks with the NAA that you can reach out to. And if you don't want to become a member, that's fine. Come out to the Axe Conference and, and just, just see what's going on out there. Do yourself a favor. You need 14 hours at least of CE every year, I'm sure. Come on out. You can get that. You can learn a little something and, and have a good time. Guys, thank you very much for watching. My name is Brian Reynolds. This has been a special edition of the Appraisal Report webinar brought to you by Appraiser eLearning. These are recorded. So if you missed any part of this, jump back on a little after the broadcast and you can watch the recorded version in its entirety. We hope to see you at the Axe Conference in Salt Lake. If you, if you come out, come on up and say hi to Craig. Say hi to me. Let me know that you saw this broadcast. Bring a friend, bring your family. Uh, we'd love to see you out there. Again, Brian Reynolds with the Appraisal Report webinar. Brought to you by Appraiser E-Learning. Thank you very much and have a great week.